You are tuned to Janet Zenith Cablevision. Thank you for watching. It's time for talk. Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service. Tonight, Rosemary takes us by means of portable camera out of our studios and maybe into your neighborhood. And now, it's time for Talk. The Kenneth Chamber of Commerce. The pictures of a group of men who have been very civic-minded, who have been very active in this community. Today we're continuing with an interview with some of the past presidents of this uh, uh, organization. And tonight we're looking at John McLean. And John was president of this Chamber of Commerce in 1966. Uh, John, that picture, that wasn't made in 1966 when you were president, was it? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going back how many years? That's what? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 32 years? Yeah. I have a hard time even thinking back what this city was like in 1966. Was it difficult for you to, to pull those years out again as it is for me? Well, I can think about how the, how the town has changed because you can go down the street and see the businesses that have been formed since that time, especially on First Street. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I came out here, the Chevrolet place was uh, almost out of town. Hey, now tell me, yes, let's talk about what brought you into this Kennedy area, and what year did you come? Well, I came here with the flood. If you remember in 57. You washed I, in here? I, <laughs> I more or less floated in here, I guess okay. you would say. The night that we were taking inventory out there, it was the 11th and 12th of August of 1957. The wet, wet when it had to rain and then water all over everything and and I just thought, well, what where am I doing up here? Now where did you come from? Okay, I came from McGee, Arkansas here. My hometown is Malvern, Arkansas. I moved from there and after graduation and a year in college I went down to Smackover, Arkansas as a bookkeeper for a Chevrolet dealer. And I stayed there until the forties and got involved in the war and and came back in uh, forty six, I guess it was. And was in Little Rock, and then got back in the service again, and and I got involved. The one got out of that in '53. I went back to El Dorado, and, and uh, where my wife was at that particular time. Are you in the car business? Are you in the Chevrolet business all of this time? Well, uh, not, when, I was working for the Chevrolet dealer there in El Dorado at the, at the time of, in '51 when I got back recalled in '51 for the what the Korean. Yeah. Uh, Korean, yeah. Well, what they call it, wasn't a war. <laughs> but I was working in Little Rock at that time for a Pontiac dealer. Okay, but you've been, cars have been pretty well your thing. Since so, 1937. Uh, I've been with, that's a day or two in the car business. Yes, it is. All right, now, you came into Kennett then, and you bought the Chevrolet place? Yes. Uh, I was working for a Pontiac dealer in McGee, Arkansas at that time as a manager, but I always wanted to have one of my own, and and this place became available. And I heard about it, and I came up here and looked at it one Sunday afternoon with my wife. And it, uh, uh, I went back and talked to this accounting firm that I had known since since 1937, that all they did was uh, did accounting work for automobile dealers, especially Chevrolet dealers. That was their specialty. I went back and I said, Mr. Jones, I can't understand it. There's 38 used car and new car outlets in Kenton, Missouri. I said, man, I don't see how you make a living there. He said, if it's that many people there than now it's making a living, which is what I think you can do, too. So we did. We came up here with those things. But talk about going into a town with 38, town of 10,000, with 38 new and used car outlets. It was really a shock for me. You know, well, I wasn't used to that. All right. And yeah. where was the business now when you bought it? Uh, was it out here where it... Uh, where, where the hospital, where the medical building is okay. now. It was there at that time. All right. Uh, do I not remember? Do I not remember that it was down? At do one time. Was it down on the... Uh, at one time, the Chevrolet deal. Chevrolet. It was the Sink Chevrolet. It was right across from the Methodist from the Baptist Church. Yeah, that's right where what... Where that service station is. That's there. right. That's right. Mr. Cash owned the Chevrolet place out, I mean, the building out where the Chevrolet place was at that time. I see. He had to dodge in something else, I think, with the deal. 
but then Mr. Sinks had purchased this from the cash, yes. from Mr. Cash, okay. and I'm had moved it out there at yeah. that time. All right. So I'm remembering that. I'm remembering a little bit of that early yes. history then that happened. So you you kind of washed in with that bad year sure and uh, had a hard time. Did you have a hard time that year making ends meet? We didn't. <laughs> we didn't. Oh. Oh. Okay. We well, didn't. a lot, a lot of people ends. didn't make we ends. We didn't make ends until after the first of the year. But, but I won't say this much about uh, the, the lending institutions at that time. Knew what trouble the farmers were in and they helped them. Uh, it, our, our business, National Auto Finance, with the GMAC. Every farmer that came in and wanted refinance, and they got it. They did not turn down a one. Mm, okay. All right. I was talking to JR at the Cotton Exchange Bank there, how they did it. The farmers that had loans at that time, they closed them out and started a new program of making loans to the farmer. He said they never did lose a dime on those he closed out. And I thought that was wonderful. Amazing. You know, that's amazing. It was. Uh, All right. Okay, so in uh, 57 you came in, and in 1966, so in uh, just a few years, nine years, you're president of the Chamber of Commerce. So you must have you must have impressed <laughs> some people around. No, they just needed somebody that was willing, willing to take a blame for everything. All right, now, now talk to me about Kennett, about the, um, you've already talked about the economic climate when you, when you came in, but what things were going on? in 1966. You mentioned a little something about uh, uh, banks. Kennett National Bank made an application for their their charter for a bank here. Okay, now was that in like 66? I don't have any bank? idea. Okay, all right. I don't right. have any idea what, you, like you say, you come in, and, and I didn't call the bank about it. But anyway, we had two banks that time, Cotton Shink Bank and Bank of Kennett, which were opposed to having another bank here because they didn't think they had enough money in Kennett to do that. Mm -hmm. And now then, as you just look out here, we not only have banks there that have gone from a two bank to a six bank town. Six I, banks? Six banks. I think it's very unusual going in, what, 40 years? We may get up there with the car dealer. <laughs> uh, we may have enough, uh, if there's that much, that we may have as many banks as you had car dealers. When Almost, if they keep on like they're going. <laughs> right. Like, like they're going now. All right. Um, now, uh, during your years, uh, did did Uniroyal, were, was Uniroyal making plans I to come I don't know whether it was that particular year where the president or I was on the industrial committee at that time. But I know that came in, had a fellow came in down and, and uh, trying to look our town over. And we were to meet with him at a certain time. And sure enough, at that time, he wasn't there. We couldn't figure out what happened. So we waited and waited and called him to the Now, this is, a, this is an executive with Well, the I don't know whether it's an executive or one of the people they send down to, you know, check a town out where the town wants to come into this or not. Yeah, okay. Check this out. And, and the Chamber of Commerce had to have a meeting with him, all those kind of things. But anyway, he had gotten cold stuffy. And he's so stuffy. Snuffy? Is that the cab driver. The cab driver. He said, I want you to take me to two places. Number one is the cemetery, and then to the disadvantaged people in this town, where they, where did they live? And he couldn't figure out why he wanted that done, but he says the town, the pride of a town, is shown by the way they take care of the, the, the poor people of the town and the dead people. And I thought that was a very interesting. And incidentally, why he was late, you know, Stumpy had taken him down there where they were trying to raise pickles at that, I mean, uh, cucumbers. cucumbers that time. And he'd take them down there and show him his cucumber farm. So <laughs> Snuffy did the tour for uh, this uh, for uh, this gentleman he who didn't comes want in? Us around. He because he said uh, he, he said, I know what they were taking us to, you know, they were taking Oh yeah. yeah I said, well now that's smart, isn't it? Well that's for this, smart. For this for, I think people need to know that. That how they take care of the cemetery and how they take care of the people we, we do a wonderful job. Uh, there's I don't think Kate has had any uh, the low-income uh, housing like we have here in Kenya. Now, it has a disadvantage, but I think the advantage outweighs the disadvantage. All right, and, uh, and executives who look at a town, yes, these are the sort of things they look at, That's but right. they don't always come just to the Chamber of Commerce. No, they not. may go to, to the cab drivers, to Snuffy, and who better knows this town you than Snuffy You don't know who you're did. talking to. That's right. You never know who you're talking to in regard to an industry coming into a town. Um, you mentioned uh, something to me also about um, the nursing homes uh, 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 problem. We were involved in that, uh, <laughs> directly involved in, in the piece of property they decided on was outside the city limits of Kenny. 
and you have to have this uh, industrial board where they can use these bonds that actually the, the town, uh, the city or the county or what it is, presents the bond, but they are not obligated. It's a type of an industrial bond where they, they, although you have to sign them and do all like that, they're not... They're not obligated if they're defaulted. That's right, if okay. they're defaulted, the city's not involved in Well, we had an city industrial board, but the property's outside of the city, so they couldn't do it, so we had to form a county industrial board. And Fred Ford was involved in it, Dennis Bacon was involved in it, and the Mr. Clark, I think, up around Hawkeye, I know, was involved in the thing. And we formed, had to get in a hurry because we run out of time, you know, get these permits to build these things, and you have a certain length of time to do it. So Judge Sharp, he was not a judge at that time, uh, fixed up the corporation paper for it. Fred Ford, time again, I threw him to Jeff City, got him signed, and got him back the same day. And so that was uh, that was uh, quite a quite, I, I thought quite a project. All right. But so we were able we were able to get this county industrial board set up so that they could sign the papers to have the uh, the bonds issued for the for the nursing home. So there, before something comes in, often there's much work to be done by by a number of people in the city. You mentioned another interesting point to me uh, back when we were talking about uh, Unaroyal. And uh, uh, Emerson was here, and Emerson was operating and had quite a large payroll at that mm -hmm. time. And then Unaroyal's plans to come in uh, at this time. Well, the rest opposition, Emerson was uh, uh, more or less uh, against it because they were afraid there was not a, enough people here to hire, to you know, to run another Okay, factory. so they wouldn't have a workforce they if another plant They wouldn't have a workforce came. here in town. But it came out that after the Emerson got, after uh, Union Royal got here, it worked out real well, and that a husband and wife could not work at Emerson. The husband could not work at Union Royal. So the wife could work at Union Royal, and the husband could work at uh, Emerson and have the in two incomes, which looks like it needs <laughs> it take mm -hmm. days nowadays for a family to get along. Mm -hmm. So it worked out really as an asset for him instead of a hindrance. Okay. And, right. and sometimes you don't know those things, you know. That's, that's yes, a thing looks like it might not work, yeah. and then in truth, it yeah, might it, come it, on it, in. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, is, the, is the president of the chamber uh, involved directly in the work? Or do you have a lot of help from people who are on, on the committees? Uh, all, the, all the committee does the work. You know how that is. <laughs> in your church, you don't do all of it. All the committees out there do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you have to depend on the committee. All the president does is see that the committee works. I mean, sometimes you have a committee that doesn't want to do anything. It's the president's job to do it. Now, the only thing that happened in 66 when I spent back from him is that we had an industrial day. And Edie Walker was in, Emerson was here, and I don't know who all was involved in that time, but we had a... So what did you do? Uh, what, what, I don't what, what we're trying to find out. I, don't remember. I know we had a banquet, but I don't know who all was there, or where the whole town was there, just certain people were asked to be there. Uh, maybe T.A. Brown could tell me more about that, but uh, there's no record out here in regard to that out here that we could find out here. But you had an industrial day. We had an industrial day. And you think day. you invited who? The presidents of all? Well, I know from Ely Walker, we had a fellow named Hancock, who was head of this district at that time, and he and I kind of kept up with each other several years after that. And I know the president at that, uh, or the, I don't know where you come out of the St. Louis, but Emerson came down. So the, the executives, who, the, the came down, came down, came down came for down. this industrial and, day. That's right. Well, it's a we, shame. We need another one like that. In fact, the Venice we probably have fallen by the wayside by not having them more often. Well, are you still active on, it uh, sounds like industry has been your thing in this chamber well, of Well, it's not that particular. You just get involved in it and you, and you, and you spend the time to do it. Uh, some people don't want to spend that much time. But are you serious about thinking that you do need another um, uh, industry day? Well, it might be a little too late for it. We should have had it maybe last year, year before last. Because we lost an industry. Well, yeah, that's true. That's because true. somewhere down the line, we didn't show that we appreciated them being here. Uh, well, my, my theory is, if I make a living out of town, I should give back something to it. Not only, you know, some time and, and some of that time. And a lot of times, people don't want to do that. Take from the town and keep going and forget about them. But you don't do that. You're supposed to put something back into a town that you take away from it. And the only way you can do that is to. Uh, help on committees and that kind of thing. That's a great statement, John. You've been listening to John McLean. He was president of this Chamber of Commerce in 1966.
has worked in this city ever since, and a little bit before that, I think. Um, it, men like him deserve to have their pictures hanging on the wall. And John, we thank you for uh, for being active in our community and for being a past president. And thank you for your continuing work here. Well, thank you for asking me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure I didn't do a very good job. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> we all, all our memories kind of yeah. slip a little. Yeah. What do you mean slip a little? <laughs> sure, I've been 